What's up, my triple loving YouTube friends? Look at what I got sitting on the bench here. The old 650, the 650, the old six and a half, the old redhead. Not only one redhead, three redheads. Yep, it is time for me to put together a couple of these redheads. And I thought, what a better time than to do a video on a complete build of one of these 650s. So I'm gonna go through, this is gonna be a several videos because I think they're gonna get lengthy because there's a lot to talk about here on these engines. And I've never done a video of them. I've done a few videos of doing like the ultra base engines, the XCR 600, the XCR 700, the XCR 800, and the ultra. I've done a few of those build videos. And those engines are pretty straightforward compared to building a 650. They're a little tougher, a little more complicated. Um, a lot of things you got to look for and watch while you're doing them. Great engines. Uh, they ran and ran and ran. I mean, there's a lot of these that have nine, 10,000 miles on them without no rebuild. And, but these two both needed rebuilds mainly because they each had a bad cylinder. They came out of RXLs and, um, I think RXLs had kind of a bad rap as far as bad cylinders. Um, the one sled was understandable. It was running pipes. Who knows, they might not have the right chip in it. Um, hard towing, <clears throat> but uh, the one, the other sled was bone stock, very low miles, it only had like 2,500 miles on it and it had a bad cylinder. It's hard telling what caused so many cylinders to fail on these RXLs. Um, if it was in the computer system, if it was in a bad fuel, um, lack of letting them warm up, because basically you could start them and EFIs, they kind of self-correct you, you run them right away. You just get on and drive them. I mean, they fuss around a little bit. We, we do have uh, an RXL right now. And if you don't let it warm up a little bit, you can't really give it gas right away because it kind of gets fussy on you, but you can definitely ride them sooner than you could a carved sled. Um, so maybe, maybe that's some of the issues. You know, people just never really let them warm up long enough. So, so I figure we'll go through building this is Trenton's engine here. I already built his. I went through this whole thing and I uh, figured I have one more engine to build now that's for my sled and uh, Project Saving It. So I'm gonna go through everything I did on his engine. I'll show you what I did and the whole process and share as much knowledge as I can about these. I'm no professional, I've always told you that. So, but I'll share as much knowledge as I can and uh, so the first year the Indy 650 came out it was an 88. Uh, it was the 01 series of the 650s. And the, being that, it was a carbon model. And the difference between the 01 series of engines and then they went to the 02 series of engine of being a carbon model uh, in 92, they had, uh, or I'm sorry, in 91 an O2 series, and then they went to O3 series on the, uh, on the RXLs. So they had an O2 and O3 series at the same time. And uh, the O1 series, on the bottom of the cylinders, the, um, the sleeves didn't stick through at all. They were flush down here. That's an easy way to indicate an O1 cylinder versus an O2 or O3 cylinder. They also made an O5 series also, and they ended in 97 was the last year of the 650. So here's an O2 cylinder, or it could be O3 cylinder. See how the cylinder, the sleeve comes out the bottom. A lot easier, very easy, quick, easy to identify. These cylinders will not fit on to an O1 case. I have an O1 case over here. Here's an O1 case. It's a lot smaller right here. When you slide the O2 cylinder down on it, it's not going to go down all the way. It stops. Not going to go. But you can put an O1 cylinder onto an O2 case. I don't think I'd recommend it. I think I've heard of people doing it. Here's an O2 case right here. As you can see, it's a lot bigger up here. But I've heard of people doing it, but it doesn't key in like the O2 cylinders when you drop them off, but it will fit on there. It will go. You can put it on. So that is that. 
quick way to identify the difference between the cylinders, between O1 and the O2 cylinders. Next, I want to talk about is some of the oiling on them. I did a little modification to this case, and I took apart five of these 650 engines. A couple weeks ago, I pulled down five of them. Because the first two I took apart, not only did they have bad cylinders, but they had a bad PTO bearing on them, on the crankshaft. All the other bearings were perfect. PTO bearing was bad. So I went into my engine room, pulled an R650 apart. Same thing, bad PTO bearing. Not to where they were just grinding, but they were, they were loose on the crankshaft. You just slide them right off the crankshaft. So that tells me they got hot over time. So I took apart five, five 650 engines and every single one of them had a loose PTO bearing. So I ordered up two new PTO bearings, ordered a puller because I, you know, I could just wiggle them back and forth. And so pulled the bearings off, put new bearings on, and I'm looking at the oil passage on these things. And I think they could be improved because I start looking at the ultra base engines. On the ultra base, where the oil passage comes through right here, get this nice and close. Here's the PTO oil passage. It's a nice clean where it comes out into the PTO bearing right there. It's nice and clean, straight, nice angle through there. You can see up in the top up here how it drops down in and the hole's nice and big. And this is pre doing the fourth oil line. And there was still PTO bearing problems on these cases. So that's why they went to the fourth oil line. So I'm gonna show you on one of these. Here's on the O2 case. And if you could see in there very well, let me get the light. I actually have a light here. So as it goes down in there, there's like a step it has to go through before it actually goes down that hole to get out to the PTO bearing. If you look on this side, see there, there's where the hole comes out. And then they had this other little hole right there. And still, lots of this, this had way more PTO bearing problems than what the ultra base engines did. So what I did is I took and drilled out this passage right here a little bit more, ran a drill bit through there. And then on this side, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one of these cases. On this side, I blended Oh boy, too many hands are going in here. I blended that hole down in there so that the oil and gas mix could flow down that hole a little bit easier. Will it help? I don't know. But I didn't think it could hurt because out of five engines, every one of them had a bad PTO bearing. So I'm hoping I'm improving something that players improved. In my mind, when I look at this hole, the way it's set up, they improved it. So that's what I'm trying to do is improve this one over here. And then I also chamfered all these holes right here. I chamfered all them holes because players in the later years, they did chamfer their holes. So I went ahead and chamfered them on these 650 engines also in these cases. So those are some of the oil mods you're gonna see me do to help improve the oiling on these bearings. I almost was tempted, very tempted to add the fourth oil line out here because there's a big boss right here. Really easy to drill down into that, that oil cavity right there. Really easy to drive, drill a hole there, put a barb in and add the fourth oil line. But I put such minimal miles on these things after I build them. I thought, is it worth it? It is, but am I ever gonna see the effects of it? More than likely not. So it's one of them things. It's like, do I spend the time to do it when I know it's right and I know it's going to help or I just leave well enough alone and let it rock? I think with the mods I'm doing here, it's going to help the situation. So that's, that's what I'm going to do versus going through the extra trouble. I mean, it, it's, it'd take a few hours to draw out the oil pump, get another fitting, Drill that, put the barb in. I mean, I've done it. I've done it on other engines that I feel that I'm gonna ride way more often 
then what I'm probably gonna ride this sled when it's done. Um, this is gonna be kind of just my joy rider, not my main rider. So, so enough on the oiling until I actually show you me doing the mods. But I'm gonna go through of cleaning up cases, my bead blasting, I'm gonna hone the cylinders, we'll talk about specs and clearances, um, and then we'll get going on the assembly of an engine. Um, so let's get clean enough and I'll show you all that. Well, first stop after disassembly is the parts washer. A lot gets done in this old girl here. Just put brand new fluid in it last weekend. Oh my God, is that stuff not cheap. 200 and some bucks for 10 gallons of the good stuff though. But it lasts me a couple years in here. We do a lot of, we and Trent do a lot of parts washing. This is where we, as soon as it's disassembled, everything goes in here. I even put all my hardware, I love Folger cans. I put all my hardware into tubs and then I, I soak it in the parts washer fluid for days to get it all. I mean, look at, look at the hardware. This, this is out of my engine though. My engine was a very clean engine. It never seen salt. It never was trailered down the road. Every bolt and nut out of this engine looked like brand new. I'm very happy with that. So, but, but I let it sit in here soak for days. It does a lot of the cleaning work for me. So I'll just keep scrubbing this up and I'll show you the next stop after I'm done parts washing the stuff. I'm doing a cylinder and the top case half for demonstration purposes here. Parts for my engine are already all clean and ready to go, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go through the process of a cylinder, of cleaning it, blasting it, honing it, checking it, and then uh, I'm gonna clean up this case half here to show you the oil mod, and then I re-clean it after doing the drilling and the, and the modifications on it. So I just wanna go through everything from start to finish on this stuff. All right, so here's my next stop after parts washing. Then I'll wash them with water. I'm fortunate enough to have a bathroom in my shop, so I just go to my laundry sink in there and I rinse everything off. It's best to rinse the parts washing uh, solvent off of all your parts. Um, it can leave a residue and it, it can cause issues. So I rinse everything with water and then I dry everything, thoroughly dry it, especially if I'm gonna run parts through the bead blaster because Bead blasting does not like water, anything. So it gets clumpy and it doesn't like it. So let's put that in here and let's make that cylinder look beautiful again. Might be hard to see, but you'll get the gist of what's going on here. As you can see, it goes pretty quickly. So I'll finish this cylinder up and I'll show you the next step. All right, so we're done with the parts washer, or I'm sorry, the bead blasting. Now we're back at the parts washer. So I blew it all out real good to get all the sand out of everything. 
It's actually glass beads. I actually bead blasted. Not the uh, vapor honing, just a bead blast on it. Doesn't, it's not quite the finish of vapor honing, but it, it does pretty darn good. I'm happy with the finish. So I'm just washing everything out real good. Now I'm going to hone it. I'm just using a ball hone, and uh, it's almost wore out, especially after just doing six 650 cylinders. But that's how I've been honing my cylinders for a long time. Some people say you should use one of these rigid stones, some say ball, micasil, chrome, cast. They all take a different kind of hone. This is what I've been using. This is what's been working for me. Uh, I built engines 20 years ago doing the same method, and they're still running to this day. So this is what I do. Right or wrong works for me. So this is how I rock it. This is Somebody, a mechanic, showed me this years ago on honing your cylinder and your parts washer because it's a constant lubricant on it. Should use oil. You, what people say you oil, mineral spirits, um, some kind of a lubricant while you're honing it. This is the way I've been doing it in the parts washer. So you just get it down in there. Just gorgeous! Oh, I love it when it comes out like that. Just gorgeous. Oh, I hope you can see this in the video. But, oh, look at the hash marks. Yeah, just absolutely gorgeous. So, I'll wash this out. And uh, I'm going to go through the whole cleaning out process again, blowing it out and stuff. And I'll go through what I like to use for a, a tool to scrape the rest of the gaskets off that didn't come off when I popped them off. So, on to the next step. All right, let's go through final cleanup on some stuff as far as scraping the gaskets. And then we'll do my oil mod. This is my go-to tool when it comes to cleaning off gaskets. The old box cutter. Works really good, love it. I go around all my surfaces everywhere. Take my time. It takes plenty of time to get all this stuff off, especially when you're fighting with all these studs. You can take them out. I don't like risking taking them out. Um, it's easy to break them, and they're not the easiest to obtain. I'm sure you can. I'm sure McMaster Car would carry them. We've, we've had to buy them for our storm engine, so I'm guessing you could get them there. Um, but I just leave them in. It's, I can work around them. So that's what I do with all my gaskets. I go around, clean them all up with the old trusty box cutter. Same thing on the bottom of the cases. Clean up all that tight bond on here. Three bond, I'm sorry, I always call it tight bond. Three bond, clean up the three bond. I just take my time, drop my knife, and I just go around, clean everything up. If anybody's gilbert it down the side of the case, I try to clean that stuff up too. All right, head cleanup. Let's talk about cleaning up the head. All right, this is how I clean up my heads. I have a steel bench, so I just stick sandpaper right onto my bench. Piece of 320 on here. I scraped all my gaskets clean on the bottom. Now you don't want to sit here and do this forever. You don't want to take any material off here. All you're trying to do is just clean it up, make it flat. So I just run it around on here. That's how I do it. Make that surface nice and clean again. And I had already done it. I mean, so I just wanted to show you again, but this, this head's ready to go on. I, I'm, I'm good with the way that looks. And the same thing with the top. I like to clean up the top of the uh, where the nuts go and where the lettering is. Then all of a sudden my OCD kicks in and I got to have my lines across the head like this. So I make sure when I go down, my head sit nice and straight. And I run it back and forth on the paper like that to clean up all that lettering and the embossments where the uh, nuts come down on tight. So that's how I make all that stuff just look beautiful again. Just absolutely gorgeous, looks lovely. Makes the top of that red head shine again. So, let's do the oil mod now. Oil mod time. 
or not oil line, but oil passageway modification. So, like I said, oh my God, that thing stuck good. I'm gonna try and take that little lip out down there. If you could pick that up right there, that little lip. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shape that in a little bit. So I ain't such a big lip for the gas and oil to have to fill that cavity up and then flow over it. I see no reason for it to do that because in the later years, they smoothed that out. Not perfect, but it was better than what it was in here. So I just put a drill bit into my drill and I'm just gonna go down in there. See what I did in there? I just smoothed that out down in there. Just took a little bit of that ridge off. Didn't blend it absolutely 100%. I just took some of that ridge off there. Now, I'm gonna go in from the back side where this hole is here. There's a big chunk of casting. There's a chunk of casting up in that hole there. I'm gonna get rid of that chunk of casting now. Once again, Change built drill bits because it's a little smaller. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel here on this one. I'm just trying to improve it a little bit. So I'm going to go up in here and I'm going to get rid of that chunk of casting that's in there. There, it didn't take much. So I got rid of that casting so it helps some of that oil flow out right there too. I said, I think it can only improve. I don't think it can actually make anything worse here. It can only improve. Now, Onto the top side, like I showed you in the later years on the ultra base engines on how they radiused the top side of their oils where they go down on the bearings. That's what we're going to do on this 650 case now. I'm going to put a little chamfer on them right here. Use this countersick bit. I think all this, all this all is going to do is help. I don't think I can hurt anything here what I'm doing. So I just put this down in there. And I just put a little chamfer on it. Helps direct the gas and oil down in there. Instead of sitting up on top and puddling away, that chamfer is going to help funnel it down in there. See what I did there now? That chamfer. That'll help get that oil down in there. So, I think that's going to conclude this video. That's basically the cleanup of the parts. And um, I think in the next video, we'll inspect. We'll check our piston gap. We'll check our ring end gap. Um, and then we'll install the crank. We'll get the bottom end put together. But there's just so much to go over. The videos are gonna get so lengthy that um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna split it up. There's probably gonna be four videos at least on this build just because there's a lot more stuff involved in doing these 650s. And uh, I, I wanna try and cover everything. I don't wanna, lose, I don't wanna leave anything out. And then uh, anybody that's trying to use this video series to build their engine, I'm hoping I cover everything to help you along with your build as far as all the torque specs, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the best I can do is, is try and show you a complete series of videos on, on building this engine and, um, and best success when you're done. I mean, hopefully she runs. That's all I ever hope for when they're done and I hope they run. So, um, thanks for watching everybody and, uh, enjoy the series of videos of building the old redheads. Thanks.